Hi, I'm Sharad Kutin and welcome to Let's Talk, the show that brings you the most important conversations in ideas, in art and culture. Today I have as my guest at this wonderful bookstore, the Grabudai bookstore in P uh, Pataling Jaya, Sharudin Ma'rov, uh, the author of Malay Ideas and Development, has been reissued and I'm very happy to have uh, Professor uh, Sharudin to help me uh, understand the contents of his book, uh, written many years ago um, and now reissued. Uh, Sharudin, why did you decide to reissue the book? Because, and I think you kind of deal with that in the introduction about uh, whether you should have updated it or not. Yes. Well, this has a lot to do with the background of the book. It was written in the mid 80s. Yeah. Now, the purpose then was, uh, yeah, apart from you know, being my uh, studies, yeah, that you know, I thought I wanted very much to record the times, the discussion. You must remember, it was aftermath of uh, 69, new economic policy. There's tremendous discussion on Malay development, you know. Uh, of course, it's all one-sided, it's all uh, mainstream. There's a lot, and of course, you know, you will be familiar with the ideas of the ruling party then. It's always blaming the masses for their indifferent laziness, not taking advantage, yeah? um, and so on. Yeah? It's a very colonial idea. Yeah, yeah? And, and, and that has sort of been utilized to justify the launch of the new economic policy. Because that was the uh, rallying call of the new economic policy, you know, that you know we need a new Malay, we need a mental revolution, change of values, abandon old values, yeah, uh, and so on, yeah. And this is it. It, it was an, a dynasis of the developmental problems of the Malays then, yeah. Right, and it, yeah. you you mentioned enough uh, terms there to you know, alert us to all the books that were also circulating at that point in time. Yes, uh, yes. Said Hussein Ali's, uh, uh, um, Syed, sorry, well, Said well, Hussein Alatas, Alatas's, yes, uh, yes. The Myth of the Lazy Natives, yes, yes, uh, Dr. Yes. Mahathir's The Malay Dilemma, the Malay Dilemma Revolution Mental, Mental by Sanu, and many, many more. It, right. it was a major mainstream idea then, justifying the new economic policy. It, it was a major uh, sh uh, policy shift. Right. And therefore, definition and diagnosis of the ills of Malay development. So as a young man, I thought, you know, I, I, I want to understand it. And I thought the best way to understand it is to study and research and try to communicate what it is. Yeah? And one thing that I realized is, you know, terribly ahistorical in the approach. It was so contemporary, it's all blaming and blaming the old colonial ideas then, yeah? And as I say, one thing that was really missing, I felt, was the historical explanation of the status of Malay development, you know, which, of course, you know, there's poverty, there's an economic gap, it was uh, agro-based, traditional, uh, non-capitalistic, yeah? uh, non-modern, if I can use even the term, you know, non-urban, yeah? So how do you understand that? And I, th I, I think that's what the book is all about. To what extent yes. would someone like yourself, and researching this, mm. have to place uh, the development of these Malay uh, texts, or, or texts that are circulating mm. in Malay society, mm. Malay mm. political society yes, among yes. its elite, uh, related to what was happening beyond Malaysia? Yes. The, the, you know, what were the models for uh, uh, Dr. Mahathir? What was he looking to? Oh, yes. And so on and so forth. Okay. What was feeding into the, uh, into the discourse, local discourse? Okay, the point is this. Yeah? Um, first place, I mentioned history. Yeah? One of my discoveries, for instance, that uh, poverty was not due. Hundreds of years, people like Abdullah Munshi had been discussing it and diagnosing it. He says, couldn't be attitude, couldn't be the fertile soil. It's, it's the ruling class. It's the elite, uh, abusive, oppressive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no economic individualism. Yeah, yeah. So it was clear that. Yeah. Now you, your question on the bigger context, feudalism. Then, to this day, it is being denied. Feudalism is as explanation of Malay development. Yeah, seeing the roots of Malay poverty. You know, or, or, or economic lack or even the economic ethos yeah 
to this day we deny it yeah now feudalism is all over south asia you have books like multal tuli writing in sumatra in indonesia that has always been there but we ignore it yeah you take the example the explanation of jose riza on on filipino under development same explanation the elite oppression injustice in equality you know it eh? is that you know so there's bigger context and if you want to take it wider context then of course it goes back to capitalism colonial capitalism you know uh, uh booker explain in indonesia in terms of dual dualistic economy you know capitalism versus traditional economy and of course there's great personalities like fanon you know classics of anti colonialism in africa so so it's bigger context but somehow this is what the book is about i connect local condition to wider explanation yeah yeah it links all the way and we choose to ignore that and to this day my regret i would say that we have not really bridged this gap in theoretical understanding what was your own mm. training if you could help us understand what alerted you to these dynamics in Malaysian society and also what were you looking at in terms of reading uh text because uh, i'm thinking of uh you know the myth of the lazy native and said who's an author's own training in the sociology of knowledge i believe yes. that's really shaped the way he he sought to understand the way text operate yes. what was your own training now first i think there was the time i was very much a child at the time the economic policy I was an undergraduate just joining the job market this is 70s you know yeah. this was in the heat of things every day you are nothing about you know we need malay millionaires you know we need malay business you know uh, there's always the threat of the non malays there's always so child of the time and of course you know from the uh, cultural pride point of view you know the stereotyping as a malay you are being told every day you are lazy is something wrong with your attitude is is something with your with your mental set you know so i need to understand that then i was fortunate in self uh, myself i was uh, fortunate enough to to have studied under professor saif sanatas of course yeah then i was exposed I need to explain and I was exposed to readings that explained including his writings of course yeah yeah but there were so many other readings in sociology the classics of sociology you know yeah course sociology of knowledge and and, and the classics of anthropology of socio uh, psychology of eric from is is the whole thing this is a good question i wouldn't be asked you know Oh, Shaudi is not a historian. He's no right to talk historian. He's a sociologist. The other way, say he's not sociologist. But my point is, I, I'm neither anywhere. I need to explain. I, I will utilize anything that I have to explain. Right. So, so anything. So, so it's good. history, I have because I'm dealing with the past. I have to deal with historical materials. Nowhere do I claim I'm a trained historian. No, but you know, I do. so the anthropology durkheim web anything anything that explain yeah. yes it was very interesting i i yes. recently listened to a podcast by james scott because james yes. scott you know uh, in his explorations of the malay peasantry you know yes. uh, weapons of the weak of course is his yes. most famous yes. book yes. Yes. and yes. then uh, the moral economy of the peasant I, i wonder if you know um in the 70s there was a real development but how do we get at the problem how do we understand it best what methodologies would yield okay. the greatest understanding okay now the thing is there's one word which the book make issue of what the hell do we mean by development then obviously putting everything in uh, epistemological terms you know historical context or man i will say cultural meaning of words yeah, whatever you call it you put it in context you see development means malay capitalism malay millionaires big money it's always stories always the legends always yeah now then you ask how do we understand it which again i i would is regret to strong word is we have to get into political economy 
you can explain things by just speeches of ministers. You, think, you, you need you need to understand colonial capitalism. You need to understand capitalism. Whether you're communist or not, you need to understand a bit of Marx. Yeah, on class. Yeah, yeah. You need a strong background on cultural history. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever, as I say, whatever. Because actually, this is from my experience. When you're dealing with the concrete, concrete problem in your backyard. Suddenly, you'll find that knowledge breaks down, cannot be com compartmentalized. You, anything, anything that's useful. Right. Uh, yeah. you, you, you mentioned Karl Mannheim, of yeah. course, you know, the kind of father of the sociology of knowledge, and yes. I think yes. uh, a big influence on Said Hussein Alatas's yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you had to name one person, apart from uh, Alatas, mm. you know, uh, whose, whose work was actually quoted by Edward Said, I think, yeah, just, yeah, to, yeah. just to put that in the mix. Yeah, um, yeah. Who would you um, say influenced you uh, tremendously in your own intellectual development? No, you see, sometimes in your gratitude, sorry, you see, in your gratitude, somehow you feel very reluctant to single out. You owe them all, honestly. I owe them all. You run through my bibliography, I'll say I owe a lot to all of them. You see, because to explain Malay ideas, you know how ideas are. It is related to process of thinking. In terms of idea, uh, sociology of knowledge, apart from a host of many people, they all explain it. Ho Zenga was excellent in terms of, of understanding ideas. Uh, Norman Cohn, historian, is excellent in terms of explaining ideas, millenarian ideas, whole loads of them. But having said all that, yes, I, I owe a lot to Karamanheim. Okay. But I won't say I am just Karamanheim, which many people make it. No, no. Run through the bibliography, a whole host of them. Okay, we'll take a yes. short break at this yes. point in time. We we'll come back. I'm speaking with Sharudin Ma'rof, the author of Malay Ideas on Development, recently reissued by Gara Budaya Press, uh, the Strategic Information Research Development Center. We're here at the Gara Budaya Bookstore. In fact, stay tuned to Let's Talk. Hi, and welcome back to Let's Talk. I'm Sharad Kutin. With me, Sharadin Ma'arof, the author of Malay Ideas on Development, uh, recently reissued. Um, Sharadin, could we talk a little bit about the structure of the book itself? So, because uh, what I'm really hoping is, um, is that, you know, we're not here to provide a summary of your ideas. Yeah. We want people to do the heavy lifting of reading the work itself, yes, right? Yes, yes. And that's where the transformation... Please. <laughs> yeah, please buy yeah. this book. <laughs> Tell us, you have about seven chapters in the book that takes us from a study of Malay feudal values to, um, to the, a look at contemporary capitalism yeah. as, it was, uh, it, as it's reshaping Malay society okay. and yeah. larger Malaysian okay. society. Okay. Tell us a little bit about the, the structure of the book. Okay. But the structure of the book, very quickly then, within the constraint yeah, of our uh, short conversation, First, I think the second title is important. Of course, f ideas we are talking about. Second is from feudal lords to capitalists. That gives the range. This coverage of you know, what happened in feudalism, continuities to colonialism, and of course, some idea of uh, post after America period. Yeah? Well, for the feudal uh, part, as you know, we we don't have people to interview now, it's too late. Yeah, yeah. So we go by uh, what I call social documents, the records, the ikaya. Till now, the interest has always been linguistic, language, you know, textual, yeah. but I thought I'll use it, uh, sociology of knowledge, fish out the ideas, and see the main ideas, you know. There you are, it's all listed in the book on feudalism, by way of development, very little of it. Because it's all Istana, palace-centric, you know, ideas of ruling class, 
you have the ideology ruling class justifying power base very little mention of uh, the masses which itself is speaks a lot you know it is you know i don't want to go into that but you know it's it's their weddings, it's their engagement, it's their, uh, you know, hunting trips, it's, and the oppression. Yeah? Uh, it's all power. Why some people cannot put on yellow, certain things, all the pantang larang, the taboos, it's all power-based. It's all the language, yeah? So you can just imagine in terms of, of uh, development, very little of it in terms of thinking. And I did refer to, I mean, if people say that was feudalism, you can compare the modern time. I say, hey, I compare feudalism versus feudalism. Compare it to Japanese situation. They modernized under Japanese feudalism. The samurais led the way. You can compare it. Yeah? Oh, in the Meiji Restoration. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, so, yeah. So, so why was it, in your view, mm. that uh, the institutions um, were not the leading sector of society, I mean, the, the feudal institutions mm -hmm. that we had before, mm -hmm. uh, if you're, you're comparing it with Japan, what was your sense of what was happening within Malay feudal society? Now, this is the thing. This is the thing you have to explain it in terms of uh, their worldview. People could say that. For instance, I think, of course, Japan was under threat. They saw China falling. They Drew, uh, they close rank, you know, they had pride to, uh, not to fall the way, to go the way China did. There's a lot of it in history. It's too long to go into that, yeah? And they modernized. They modernized. It's all on record. They did not, you know, close themselves to Western knowledge. They translated, they traveled, they brought back, and they modernized. But, of course, in the military field. Which made them a world power. By 1905, they could take on Russia. That it had gone into history first defeat. Right. The of Russia Western Jin power. Oh, yeah, yeah. Japanese war. And to this day, we, if we are open enough to acknowledge it, the first Asian nation to succeed in modernization. Right. So that takes yeah, us to 1911. I, I, you know, yeah. I do want to throw in this a little yeah. bit because I know today that feudalism and the, the word feudal yeah. is often used as a pejorative term. It's used yeah. to attack people for excessive deference to power. Oh, yeah, yeah. Overuse, in fact. I would over, say overuse. overuse yeah. Yeah. Whatever you don't like this day is feudalism. No, that's not the way I sense it. So the yeah. discipline that you bring, the intellectual discipline that you want to bring in this book yeah, to yeah. the idea of feudalism, what yeah. would, how would we understand that? It refers to a system. We have to understand it was a system with features, clear structure, clear meaning of power. You know, eh? idea of size is very clear. And I'm, I'm baffled to this day we have historians that we never had feudalism. I think it's, it's, it's you know. Okay. How, how do we then, I need to do this to open up our window to past history. We need to explain into the past. It's not you just chop it off, suddenly we are a nation with no past. We cannot. And if we have a past, what do we call that? What do we call Melaka? What do we call? We cannot pretend as if it was nice. You know, don't look bad. Okay, I want, oh, yeah. to, I want to shift the conversation a little bit mm. about the time, because the 60s and 70s was also dominated by, I think, several sociological theories. One of those was modernization theory, right? Okay. The idea that post-colonial societies, mm. uh, as in their encounter with capitalism, would start to modernize. They would shed feudal relations, they would develop okay. a, a sense of the individual, okay. Okay. right? Now, now Religion uh, would disappear now, again, or be minor. Again, that is what the book is about. That is why the key term, as basic as that, what do we mean by development? I couldn't use the term modernization, yeah, because, because it's slightly different. But actually, we do, we, I am referring to modernization. Because development is a very diffuse concept, whatever, yeah, because, yeah. Now, this is precisely our conception of development, our understanding, is ideological. It has been really confined into capitalism and a very backward capitalism at that. As Fanon pointed out, it is not even bourgeois capitalism that spurred the West. It was imitative. It was, you know, uh, one that concentrated on, you know, raw materials, you know, 
you know, uh, supplying industrialization in, in. So, there it is, yeah, yeah it, it, it is, I would say, a very backward capitalism, you know. In fact, if, uh, I don't mean to be a fancy, I'm quoting, yeah, this is a capitalism that Weber calls a paria capitalism. Right. Or political capitalism, political capitalism that runs on, you know, rentier mentality, contract, government contract, corruption, you know, it's, it's, it's not capitalism. So the kind of, yeah. I think, Esart's, is, uh, Esart's capitalism, I think, is also an expression that's been used to describe... Oh, uh, many terms for the same thing nowadays, uh, okay. you know, yeah. yeah. What, and I, I want to bring this, mm. this, this man, we mentioned him in the first part of the show, Dr. Mahathir Mohamad. Yeah. Because he is seen in his 22 years in power as trying to shift the, the terms of the debate about development. I think there yeah. you have a man explicitly uh, articulating the question of development. But beyond the rhetoric, what did you see in Mahathir's conception of development? Okay. Did you see continuity? Did you see a break? Okay, first of all, first of all, he is, still is, you know, he, he was and still is yeah, uh, enamored with, with uh, look his policy, Japan. Yeah? What he saw, he, what he sees is the development, the modernization, their success, yeah? but not much interest in the history of it. How did they get that? You know, the restoration, the reform, the, the learning from the West. No, I didn't see that. Yeah? That is just again, you know. What? Contextually, well, you read his work. Combination of, uh, of course, it authoritarian, as in the past. Very strong colonial idea of the Malays mentality. So it's mentality, mentality. They all talk in terms of abstract Malay, Malay. You don't know which class, which group. It's all Malay. It was part of this NEP policy. You know, Malays must cease being it. It's Malays should not be just drivers and chauffeurs to the uh, non-Malay rich. You know, we need non-Malay rich from the point of view of cultural ego. We need, you know. So it's again, yeah, not even capitalism essentially is Malay capitalism, even narrower. So, of course, you know the whole ethos then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, still at it. That is why I, honestly, I, I don't mean to be arrogant, yeah, but honestly, when Gerak Budaya asked me to have this board, I see very little to update. When they say update, no, I see it meant to be record the time, it's the, I've seen in the production, I see very little change. That's very interesting. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, we have about a minute or so left, mm. and I want to ask you, does the person who picks up this book, mm. does he or she require a degree in sociology to understand it? Who could read this book and, get, and what would you want them to gain from reading it? Who can pick it up? I think anybody. I, I've, I've got feedback that the book is very readable. In fact, to some point, for some people, it is uh, not a comp compliment. Probably meaning unacademic, probably, you know, simple, but that is my purpose, to be understood. I wrote it to be understood and to be read. Right. And it's yeah. also available yeah. in Malay? Yes. Okay. If I'm not sure, my memory is not. Yes, it is. Yes, it's just out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you don't need a degree in sociology to read a book like this? No. I don't think so. That is my feeling. I don't think so. Everyone has been reading my book. You know? uh, and what would you like people to, to take away from it? Uh, do you want them to use this book as a, uh, as a framework to understand what's happening today? Yes. Yes, I state that. The roots of Malay poverty, the roots of Malay economic problems, the roots of many ministerial speeches, the policy is going around another circle now. Same thing. Same thing. You know, we, we are not uh, going. Yes, yes. And and the thing is, I don't want to revise, update it. I don't want to be chasing them. It's there. It's, I'm analyzing position of the Malay elite, the character of the Malay elite, the worldview of the Malay elite, the values, their concerns. Right. Yeah. Oh. 
Thank you very much. We've come to the end of the show. Yeah. Uh, and I do hope that everybody does pick this book up, or a good number of people do pick it up and read it, because I think that's where the learning really begins. And this is just an entree into your ideas. So. Yes, and, and you know, I, I need to make a quick point. Why the book to be reissued after some time? Yeah? That is, as they see it, printed and dated. All along, I've been trying to help it out. It was not easy. Right. Especially in the 80s. Then, situation was different. Political situation was different. Censorship was different. Yeah? And only recently, I managed to bring it out in Malay. Again, yeah? I've tried major publishers. You know, they all say, great book. But well, I, I hope this uh, starts a, a rush for the book uh, yes. here at the Garat Budaya Bookstore. Yes. Thank you again for, Thank for being on the show. Thank you for having yeah, yeah. I've been speaking to Sharjah Matrov, the author of Malay Ideas on Development from Feudal Lord to Capitalist, uh, available at the Garat Budaya Bookstore in Pataling Jaya. That's all I have for you on this show. I'm Sharad Kutin, only for Astro Wani. <laughs>